Now, today we will be dealing with the important disease in microbiology from a medical perspective, from a pathological perspective, and from the perspective of being asked in the examinations, be it neat PG, be it FMGE, be it INICT. So first of the diseases which I have taken, which has been chronically asked and which is very important, and I would just like you to go through the important points which I'll be enumerating over here. So the first of the disease is actinomycosis. Why I have taken up this disease, a favorite of examiners, need PG, FMG, and a question asked, it is caused by, so you have to remember the causative organism is Actinomyces israeli. And one important fact asked about is the presence of sinus tracts, and these sinus tracts exude sulfur granules. So actinomycosis characterized by presence of multiple sinus tracts as a result of inflammation, or infection and these sinus tracts have got sulfur granules in them and these granules are particles composed of interwoven filaments of bacteria. So that is very important to remember about actinomycosis and the sulfur granules, an important association. Now second question, acute endocarditis and you have to remember that acute endocarditis is caused by staph aureus. Here I am not talking about subacute bacterial endocarditis. SAB SAB is a result of streptococcus viridans infection, but acute endocarditis, which is a more fulminant, more severe course, is caused by staph aureus. And it is usually present in intravenous drug users, and the valves on the right side of the heart are often involved. So severe course, fulminant course more acute course, staph aureus and IV drug abuse are the features of acute endocarditis and you have to distinguish it from SAB, subacute bacterial endocarditis. Now third question asked from pediatrics, acute epiglottitis, also known as supraglottitis, is most commonly due to a question repeated and especially in underdeveloped world, it is usually due to H influenza. The most commonly affect children between two to eight years and it can cause progressive acute onset, severe sore throat, fever, progressing to dysphagia, and systemic toxicity can ensue. But it has to be remembered that acute epiglottitis is an emergency and the child or a patient should be treated because he can develop progressive respiratory obstruction within a matter of hours and it is a medical emergency and usually the epiglottitis might cause a swollen edematous and a cherry red epiglottis. So it is very important to recognize acute epiglottitis and you have to remember H influenza and epiglottitis as an association. Now, acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis, a question asked in ophthalmology, a question asked in virology, the commonest cause of acute hemorrhagic Conjunctivitis is Coxsackie virus, A24, EV70, and EV71. And you have to remember that the salient features are burning pain, sensation of foreign body in the eye, ocular pain, photophobia, blurred vision, and may present with severe eyelid swelling and discharge from the eyes. And subconjunctival hemorrhage may be associated. So acute hemorrhage conjunctivitis and association with Coxsackie virus is very important. Then we have got clinical conditions asked as acute pyelonephritis. I am not talking about chronic pyelonephritis and it is more common in females as a result of early sexual activity during pregnancy and you have to remember the most common organism causing acute pyelonephritis is E. coli followed by Klebsiella. E. coli unanimously is the most common organism causing acute pyelonephrite and there can be emphysematous pyelonephrites as well which is characterized by the presence of gas within the kidneys and here acute pyelonephrites presence with severe fever, high grade fever, chills, rigors and flank pain with dysuria. That's very important. So E. coli and acute pyelonephrites. So liver abscesses, amoebic liver abscess, and you have to remember amoebic liver abscess is caused by anti amoeba histolytica, and this protozoan may be found in stool specimens with trophozytes and cysts, and amoebic liver abscess usually presents on the right side of the liver, and the amoebic liver abscesses can go into the small intestine as a result of migration of trophozytes. So amoebic liver abscess is caused by anti amoeba histolytica very important. 
Now, acute separative or touch media. So this means an inflammation infection of the middle ear and it usually occurs within three weeks and it is a bacterial infection and the most common organism tends to be streptococcus pneumonia, H. influenza, Moraxella that are important. So ASOM and streptococcus pneumonia are very important. Now, as far as atypical pneumonia by mycoplasma pneumonia is concerned, it presents as an atypical pneumonia. The organism is usually seen in case of teenagers and young adults. And characteristic feature is that in the cold agglutinin test antibodies, in the patient serum agglutinate, human RBCs, these antibodies do not react with mycoplasma. So mycoplasma pneumonia is one of the important uh, features of atypical pneumonia. Now, a question asked lately, babiosis and the clinical presentation of babiosis. It usually presents like other bacterial infections, fever, sweats, chills, rigors, lethargy, malaise, myelgens, orthalgia. You have to remember that babiosis is a very important disease, a common favorite of the examiners. And on lab findings, there may be hemolytic anemia associated with babiosis. That's a very important, uh, I mean to say, finding which has been clinically asked and the association of hemolytic anemia with babiosis. Now, you have to remember botulism and the causative organism. Clostridium botulinum is the causative organism of botulism and botulinum toxin causes descending paralysis and that blocks the release of acetylcholine at the NM junction, neuromuscular junction. So botulism and clostridium botulinum and colostridum botulinum is the primary organism causing botulism. Now, brain abscesses. Usually, many organisms cause brain abscesses, but recently, no cardiasteroids. A question linking brain abscess to the most important organism, and no cardiasteroids is one of the organisms which causes brain abscess. And you have to remember that dissemination to the brain is common, especially in case of immunocompromised patients. Now, what is a Brill-Zinsser disease? Epidemic typhus, the causative organism, Rickettsia proboski, causes Brill-Zinsser disease. This is a question asked in social and preventive medicine. This is a question asked in medicine. So, the causative organism of Brill-Zinsser disease is Rickettsia proboski. So that is very important. Now, as far as brucellosis is concerned, you have to remember that brucellosis is caused by brucella species and the association of brucella with, I mean to say, veterinary workers, those who deal with cows and goats. And this is also transmitted as a result of unpasteurized milk products, unpasteurized dairy milk products. And one important thing which has been asked is cat scratch disease. The causative organism of cat scratch disease is uh, B. Hensla. It is characterized by, you have to remember, benign self-limited regional lymphadenites. This is one clinical condition in which there is regional lymphadenites, I mean to say lymphatic channels along the limbs may be inflamed, inflamed and there will be inflammation of the lymphatic channels causing lymphadenites and this is a small pleomorph gram negative bacillus and that is very important and Varden steri stain is used for staining B. Hensla. So cat scratch disease and B. Hensla you have to remember. I think that these some important things are very, very important as far as your uh, microbiology is concerned. And these questions have been asked. So you revise these diseases well. Thanks a lot.